Okay, welcome back. Uh, we are joined by uh, Carrie Hendricks. So, Carrie, hey. Hey, buddy. How you doing, man? Hey, I'm Carrie. I'm cool. Hey, buddies. So, you are not in South Africa, although you are originally from South Africa. That's correct, yeah. Um, that's all I'm going to say about you. Would you like to give us a, a little bit of a flavour of who you are and what, what kind of stuff you do? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm, I run a small company in Glasgow, um, ID Cyber. So, and uh, we do try and help loads and loads and loads of companies just getting cyber secure and so on. Um, personally, myself, former military, um, jumped into another company that, uh, that well, it's this, let's loosely call it records management um, for the intelligence agencies. Uh, you, know, I, you know, I jumped in there and, of course, opened a whole new world. And later on, cyber just joined the game. So, yeah, all cool. So give us an indication of what your average day is like. What do you do? Whew. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if you can well, tell us, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I mean, there's loads of, loads of different days. Um, some days it may be um, helping folks through an incident response um, after being hacked or a security breach or something like that. Some days it will be... Um, training loads of different folks on how to be more so, uh, more secure. Um, sometimes uh, running hacker courses, um, and but by far the the biggest part of my day, um, my normal days are to do with cyber essentials and how to uh, get businesses involved into just just shore themselves up in in a way that. They don't get hacked. They don't, you know, they don't make silly mistakes. Um, ensuring that the controls are in place, and you know, keep as much away from the user as possible in terms of the the pitfalls and so on. Yeah, cool. On the matter of cyber essentials, yeah, um, there are dissenting voices in the industry around the validity and the quality of cyber essentials, and in fact, I. Um, in August, I was at a, a meeting with GCHQ, uh, or the NCSC, I beg your pardon. And, yeah. um, and there were people in the room who are employed by Her Majesty's government who said it was rubbish and they wish they'd never done it. Um, what are your thoughts on that in terms of the quality of what it can bring to increasing the posture and the robustness of a company's security? Okay, the, the very first, well, the very first things that people should remember, this isn't a pain test. No, for a, for a start, you know, this is this is not this is not going to be an, a be all end all thing. But it's one of those things that, you know, if if you had no money to spend on your organization and there was a, a set of guidelines you could follow that would actually make you more secure, um, being more up to date and so on, then it's a fantastic way to go. Now, I've been at many of the. Uh, meetings with NCSC as well. So, um, and the thing that we are trying to to instill in people is just get the basics right. Go back yeah. to the basics. Just, um, you know, just do it. For example, you know, um, earlier on um, mentioned about pass um, um, passwords on printers and uh, exposing stuff to the internet. You know, part of all of this is checking. Have I exposed anything to the internet? Yeah, sure. Um, you know, have have I upgraded the firmware? Have I patched, you know, my devices? Have I patched operating systems? Are the, are the things that I use from day to day connecting to the internet, is that up to date? You know, does my antivirus work? Does my mail get filtered so that um, any dangerous content um, it's gets dumped. quarantined, yeah. you know, before it actually gets to me. Yeah. And similarly with browsers, you know, does, you know, what happens if I manage to click on a dodgy link and I download something, what will happen? Will it be uh, quarantined? Will it be allowed? You know, what types of things will be we allowed? How many clicks does it take to execute the thing? When does antivirus kick in? when does even um, group policies coming in in terms of where stuff can execute from um, your system. That's yeah. right. 
you know, so it's it's all stuff that you can do, and it's not stuff that you have to spend a million bucks on. Yeah, and a lot point. of cases, yeah, a lot of cases, it's included in the operating system. Absolutely, right? like yeah, you know, BitLocker and App Locker, and um, you know, it sometimes feels that the Windows operating system is actually a security solution that also runs programs. Yeah. Um, so, so one of the criticisms I've heard, uh, and I'm a huge believer in cybersecurity essentials. Actually, I feel like it should be a minimum data protection standard adopted yep. by the UK government, and maybe we're moving in that direction. But the big thing that was missing from the standard was backup. They didn't, they didn't mention, uh, you know, daily backup or daily offsite yeah. backup. You know, is that an oversight or is it just um, because it wasn't the, this, that component wasn't really considered a, a security thing by the, by the purists? Right. So, so in, no, it's not so much about being purists and everything else. So um, the basic cyber essentials part is about just having the basics in place. Right. So, so it's all, you know, it's all the things in. So once you move up to Cyber Essentials Plus, where it's an audited part of all of this, it actually goes in and one of the questions in there, what is your backup strategy? How you know, do you have an online backup strategy? Does it, do you have offsite and everything else like that? So you do get to ask the questions during a physical audit of the organization, whether if it's part of the, the basic part, yeah, I suppose they could have asked it in, um, but you know, there's about more more than fifty questions already. Yeah, yeah. So, so you know, and and we don't want to sort of exhaust them um, by just. Can I can I ask you a tough question about okay. that? Because I I would suggest to you like cybersecurity essentials level one mm -hmm. is essentially what the business can self attest to, right? Yeah. Yeah. Is it useful at all? Because the business can't, may not even be able to answer those, those questions, right? No. Okay. So that is a brilliant question. So um, we've had many instances. I mean, to be, uh, to be fair, we do uh, more than a thousand of these a year. So, wow, um, that's huge. That's huge. so, um, so, so the, so the issues are, is that, smaller companies that maybe have a managed service provider, um, they don't know what service the managed service provider actually provides. So, so right. the questionnaire can act as a checklist so that you can actually go through and say, well, have you changed my passwords? Have, you know, have you stopped my stuff being exposed onto the internet, like my printers and NAS drives and whatever, you know, um, are you updating my antivirus? You know what? What other things are you putting in? You know, in to um, actually protect my business. So, if at any stage the the guys will actually come back and say we're going to have to give you a quote on that, um, you know, they are not doing the basics. They are yeah. not <laughs> doing the basics to keep you safe. So, I love it. I just love it. <laughs> so yeah, we'll send you a quote for the basic stuff that we already told you we were doing. But yeah, yeah. 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 No, yeah. I think it's a, um, an interesting point. I, I wasn't being mischievous at the start <laughs> about, about uh, criticizing cyber essentials. It's, um, no. it, it does get bad press. And, and obviously there are good reasons that you've described why it's a good thing. And I think the conclusion for me is that doing something like cyber essentials, and I'm guessing there are other, similar frameworks that you can adopt is better than doing nothing. Yeah. Um, 100%. And I think that's the fundamental point. Yeah. I know what's interesting is the UK cybersecurity essentials, arguably the first sort of standard <laughs> geared to small medium business has been recently adopted by uh, Canada. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the small business administrative uh, organization, SBA in the U S has also endorsed essentially a duplicate of cybersecurity mm -hmm. essentials. So it is gaining some momentum. And I do know that if you're part of the Lloyd's banking group, uh, you have to be cybersecurity yeah. essentials level two certified by a third party. Yeah. So it's starting to become a thing. 
Yeah, absolutely. You know, you know, earlier on, um, Tim Morgan, uh, he mentioned, you know, that they use cyber essentials, cyber essentials as a gap analysis. So, um, and it's a really good starting point, even even before you think you're going to need a a pen test or something like that. You know, going for a pen test before cyber essentials is stupid. Um, you know, and it's and it's. If you can catch all the low hanging fruit first, um, that just makes the pain tester work a lot harder. And coming back to your um, thing about that, if you're a business customer, you need to have Cyber Essentials Plus, you know, it just makes good sense. Um, there's quite a lot of organizations that, you know, they'll only deal with other organizations if they are going to. Um, you know, if, if, if they've proven to have all the basics in place, you know, and um, if I'm, if I'm going to see receive data from you, I want to be sure that, or you would want to be sure that um, I'm, I'm well prepared for looking after it in terms of, you know, I'm not going to get hacked. I'm not going to get my email compromised. I'm not going to. Basic um, supply chain. Yeah, right? yeah. 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 That makes perfect sense. So, Kerry, we've seen you on the conference circuit quite a bit in the last year. Um, yeah, baby. <laughs> particularly up north of the border. Um, we enjoyed your company at, at B-Sides Edinburgh, which was super cool. Um, what are your thoughts on the information security community and, and the things that are going on? We've, we've had a number of conversations with other people about it. Um, what are your experiences? Oh, um, you know, it, being based in Scotland is, is just absolutely phenomenal. Um, we have fantastic guys like Stu Hurst, um, just yeah. trying to do stuff. Um, your imitable Sean as well. Yeah. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. Um, you know, and it's, I am super excited that things are gaining so much momentum. Um, we're in a tiny wee country, but things are just going absolutely fabulous. So, so this year, um, I was fortunate enough to do the keynote speech at the uh, Glasgow Caledonians <coughs> a cyber conference. Yeah, awesome. so, so their very first conference being the very first speaker. So um, awesome, you know, and there were so many people out there that, you know, they want to enter into cyber or information security. And, you know, and it's not just all about hacking. It's you know, there's many, many more things. Like um, even, even, even if you're a psychologist, even um, in administration, even you know, if you want to be in forensics, if you want to be incident response, if you want to be, oh, I mean, it's it's so wide, and um, yeah. and I'm so happy that that there's so many programs out there um for for kids um younger kids well younger kids older kids um young adults um sort of middle adults <laughs> older adults and then you know, <laughs> everybody, and then everybody everybody even 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 old guys like me you know and us old guys like us i you know and you know and it's and it's really heartening to know that Nobody will really be excluded from this because everybody can bring something to the party. Yeah, yeah. You know, be it experience, be being learning off somebody, being a mentor to somebody, being, um, you know, it's 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 just such a diverse industry that um, yeah, it needs. I, I, and I really think it's going to grow huge. Yeah. I agree. It's there's something for everybody, isn't there? Um, oh, yeah. And it's nice to see people specialize. Um, but I, I guess I take some comfort in the fact that I'm not really a specialist. At, at AppSec is where I come from. That's my mm -hmm. background. But um, I do a bit of everything, you know, I get involved in building access control and um, risk management and, and doing the certs and PCI DSS and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> There's just never a dull moment. And, and I kind of oh. like, I like, I like my role in the industry because it's kind of, it's, for me, it's suitably diverse. I do bits of everything, and I enjoy it for that reason. Yeah. So, so earlier on, um, Dan Card um, referred to, you know, we all should get back to the basics. Just, you know, yeah, you can be an expert and stuff, but 
to understand what what the expert bit is, you need to, to understand the basics. You know, and you have to be really good at the basics. Um, so much so, a lot of the work we get involved in, and certainly I, I myself, is working with the police. And, you know, they have this massive struggle as well on how to do new stuff. You know, yeah, yeah. there's, you know, how to, you know, how do we investigate something? You know, there's a new there's a new platform popping up, you know, how do we, how do we just, how do we even get on it, get stuff off it? Um, how do we learn from it? You know, and it's, and it's a massive thing if you're working in incident response and there's, of course, incident response is not, you know, it's not just hacking. It's, um, you know, what happens to the victims afterwards, the, the people. Um, yeah. Because, you know, we've seen some terrible, terrible, terrible things that happen on social media where um, it, you know, some posts re will result in suicides. And of course, yeah. you know, and it's, you know, it, the race is on to how do we learn the new stuff? Um, you know, and how do we keep people from being safe on the new stuff? Yeah, no, I completely, completely agree with you. Another thing that's, that you kind of touched on around the, the learning and the, ed and the educating side of things is, there's now a rise in the, the kind of blue team aspect mm -hmm. of the industry in, in terms of uh, conferences and the, and, the, and the subjects and talk materials that have, have yep. been put out. And I find that to be really refreshing because previously when I looked at the, at the speaker schedules of a lot of conferences, and I'm not going to name any, but it tended to be all about reversing and, and mm -hmm. hardware hacking and, 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 and pen testing and all the kind of red team stuff and, and all of the adversarial kind of subjects. And I found it a little bit disheartening and off-putting because I, that's not me. I, I don't, I, I'm interested yeah. in that kind of stuff, but I don't do that. I don't get paid to do that. I get paid to, to defend an organization and work yeah. with people yeah. doing that kind of work. Yeah. And, and it's nice now seeing that the, the defender aspects of what we do are starting to get yeah. bubbled up to the surface publicly and people are talking about it more freely. And I find that really refreshing. Yeah, it's, I, it, it's almost like, you know, we're starting to develop these bespoke tracts of information that you know if you're a red team or pen tester reverse engineer that's sort of like one track and then if you're uh if you're blue team web application security you know sim that you know on the other side and then you know you you have mike and i um, on how to write emails and, <laughs> and and build powerpoint presentations this is true that's that's my day job yeah yeah no you know and um, a long time ago, um, probably about a decade ago, um, I was working in an investigation team um, in Hong Kong going after organized crime. And, cool. and the fortunate, well, the good thing is um, the criminals are no better at um, protecting their, their, their stuff either. <laughs> so, you know, they'll, they will still use password as a password. You know, and you know they'll not protect stuff properly. Leave open databases and all kinds of stuff. So, yeah. So, so the blue teaming in an operational security and all you know all those kind of things are, you know, just stuff. I believe just stuff that you have to know. Um, you know, even if it's just learning how to set something up properly and not just go to the um, start next 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 finish kind of thing yeah. does it work yeah cool we're ready to go um yeah it's you know it's a far way from you know far away from keeping stuff secure yeah agreed so, completely agree all right so we've got a minute left okay uh, in the minute we've got left uh carrie if you wouldn't mind just giving us an idea of what your next 12 months is going to be like Ooh, well the next 12 months is going to be lots of lectures um, lots of new courses. I've got a new course starting at one of the universities, um, which is brilliant. Um, hopefully this this next year will be a full on focus on getting more cyber essentials practitioners ready. Um, you know, because if if the if the government's going to make this a compulsory thing to do for businesses, we nowhere near have enough folks to do this. Um, we're talking thousands and thousands of yeah. folks. So, yeah. 
And, and over the last year in Scotland, we've trained probably about 400 of them. Wow. And, and it, it's, it's even much more than what England and Wales and everybody else has. So Scotland is right at the top with the most people. And even for the small country that we are, we're nowhere near enough. We're nowhere near enough. Um, yeah. So, so yeah, it's going to be a, um, it's going to be a very, a very heavy focus on, on training folks this next year into just, just either getting into cybersecurity or information security, be defenders, be um, analysts, be um, auditors, be just even just a consultant to say, tell me about passwords. You know, yeah. how do I, how do I install patches? How do I, you know, just do, just do the basic stuff. Because yeah. that that is very lacking. Will you keep up the good work, Carrie? I'll try my very best. Yeah, but we need, <laughs> more, people, so much, we need more people like you that are, uh, are bringing us along. So thanks ever so much. And thanks for joining us. No worries. Cheers. Bye-bye. Thanks, mate. Cheers.